What's up guys, Viper FPV here, and today we have a brand new product that was uh, just sent out to me over by Banggood. This is the Tyro 79 by Iashin, and I honestly think this is like the cheapest quadcopter you can probably buy for 79 bucks. I don't think you can get into this hobby any cheaper, minus getting a radio and getting some goggles and some batteries. Um, but what we're going to go ahead and do today, um, we're just going to go ahead and build it, and then I'm going to do a review on it. And then we're going to kind of see how it performs and see how it does and see if this thing is really worth 79 bucks, which 79 bucks is pretty cheap, especially what you're going to get in this thing. So let's go ahead and open it up and see what it comes with. So it looks like we got a video transmitter right here, and it just looks like stacks into your mount, into your stack. This is part of the bottom plate on the frame, and this is a 3-inch quadcopter. So for 79 bucks, can't complain though. And these are all your little hardware. We've got our motors right here. We've got a camera. And then this is part of the, looks like the flight controller right here. And then we got our ESC, 4 in 1 ESC right down there. Okay, let's take this camera out. If I can get it out. Dang it. All right. We've got a battery strap. We've got some zip ties it comes with. We got some side plates for the frame. Looks like these are some mounts for either the battery or for landing pads. And then we got our plugs, XT30, and everything here. So that's neat. Got the metal pieces there. We got some prop things, some more screws. It looks like some carbon fiber tools. That's neat. It comes with something to put it together if you don't have tools. And then some of these props, which kind of look real generic, but we'll put those to the side. So let me go ahead and take these motors out. These are the motors that we're going to be using. It comes with it comes with some Iashin 1607 2800 KV motors. And right off the bat, I can tell this, this wire isn't really silicone wire. This is like more like regular wire. We'll have to play with that later. So what we're going to do to start our build is we're going to go ahead and take everything out. If I can get this camera out. It doesn't look like it comes with any instructions. Nope. So this video will be helpful to put this thing together if you do go ahead and pick one up. And uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to leave all the links down in the video description. Uh, go ahead and pick one of these up yourself. It will be an affiliate link. So if you want to go ahead and support the channel, you're more than welcome to go ahead and do that. Alrighty, so... I'm going to go ahead and put everything to the side, get this all out so we can all see what we're working with here. So we've got our video transmitter. Let's go ahead and take everything out of the package. So I'm going to take these out of the package and be right back. Alright, so you want to go ahead and start off with everything laid out across your workbench. Um, make sure you have everything where you can see it. Um, I have the base plate right here. And we're going to go ahead and start off with mounting the motors onto the Tyro 79. I like to stretch them out. This wiring is really stiff. Um, so if you're having some problems stripping it and cutting it, um, you can go ahead and decide for yourself if you just want to go ahead and leave it at length and tuck it in, or if you want to go ahead and just go ahead and uh, cut it and then strip it. So go ahead and use some Loctite um, using the blue Loctite. It is not the permanent one. You don't want to use the permanent one, or you're going to have a lot hard time putting those screws into the motor, and you might have to use heat to take them out. Uh, this is per uh, semi-permanent, I believe, and you just pretty much can just unscrew it, and then it goes ahead and unscrews. And the screws you want to go ahead and use are going to be like the, they're not uh, shiny, they are flat, and they just barely um, go into the plate here, as right here. You can see I'm putting it up to there and putting it next to the base of the motor, and it's not going into the windings of the motor. Um, if that does happen and it's too long, uh, you will have a short and uh, it can cause a lot of big problems going down the line. Here I went ahead and mounted the 4-in-1 ESC to the board. I was actually missing some standoffs, so I had to go ahead and find some of my own to put on there. And that's what I went ahead and did and mounted it with the screws, the flat, uh, their flat black screws, and I mounted it with the plus and minus as you see like that. Uh, now I went ahead and I'm getting ready to mount the XT30 to the 401 ESC. 
and I'm soldering that on there just like so. And then once you're um, done soldering on the XT30, you want to go ahead and start working on how you want to mount your wires to your 401 ESC. Um, on this, I'm going to be going from the inside or you can go from the outside. It's up to you how you want to route them. But I'm going to go through the inside and mount them just like that. You can also go ahead and use the zip ties that you have in your bag and secure the motor wires down like I have. It does help soldering the wires onto the ESC a lot easier. Now I'm going ahead and getting the flight controller and make sure that you put that to the forward, like the little arrow you've seen, that's going to be to the front of the quad. And after I went ahead and mounted that on there, we're going to go ahead and put all, plug all the wires into it like that. Um, I think, and you can just go ahead and tuck your 401 ESC wire so just like that. Now what I'm going ahead and doing is I'm plugging in the servo connector for the receiver. That's right there. And I did have a problem with this connector for the camera. Um, it is actually a three pin and it's just not the right one. So I actually had to use my own connector I had and I'm just going to have to go ahead and cut it and then solder it onto the actual uh, connector that they have. And now what I'm going to do is get your video transmitter and kind of just see how it's going to go. I connected it to the um, harness right there. It is the only silicone wire pack that has four pins on it. And you just go ahead and just mount it onto your stack just like that. And just kind of tuck the wires in as best as you can just so it makes it a lot cleaner of build. And you can go ahead and put the screws on right now as, as well as I'm going to go ahead and do... So then once you're done with that, you want to go ahead, I'm going to, I'm actually soldering the camera. Um, please take note here that my connector is wrong and that red wire is actually ground. My black wire is actually positive. So do not follow what I'm doing um, unless you do have it. Because if you look here, it is a three pin harness and it's missing the one pin on the end and that's how you want it connected. You do not want that pin there. So make sure you connect it just like I do and you might have mixed up wires just like I do. So that's why I went ahead and cut my harness and I went ahead and I'm gonna solder the plus, my plus side, my red wire to actually my black and then my black wire to the red. Um, but please make sure when you're doing this that you, I actually went and used a voltmeter and verified what was coming out of what. So now I'm going to go ahead and use my wire up my XM Plus receiver. And it's pretty simple. It actually is the correct wiring. So it's red to red and then black to black. And then the um, yellow wire coming out of it is going to go to the green wire on my um, XM Plus receiver. So I went ahead and soldered them all up. And then once we're done with um, soldering up, we're going to go ahead and bind this thing up. Um, I did use Teflon tape, uh, Kapton tape, to um, put it around the... So right now, I'm going to go ahead and bind it up since it's already out of the quad. It's a lot easier. Um, I went ahead and I just copied a model I already know, had it XM Plus on it, just so it carries over the same settings. And then that's a really easy way just to copy models and get yourself real uh, set up real quick when you're getting another model you already have. So I'm going ahead and going to bind. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, bind the receiver and leave it in D16. Uh, I'm not using telemetry on this receiver, so I just went and click bind. And I'm using the uh, 9 to 16 telemetry. Oh, so I'm using, uh, yeah, 9 to 16 telemetry on. Even though I'm not using telemetry, I'm just going to leave it on anyway. And then when you want to go ahead and do is you want to power up the receiver while you're holding the button. And I'm sorry for the uh, blurry video. It's just how it was focusing. But I'm going to go ahead and um, and that's the cap on tape. You can kind of see through it and you can see lights on it. Joshua Bardwell uses this a lot as well. And it's actually pretty good 
it's really easy to work with. And I'm going ahead and holding the button down, and then I'm going to go ahead and um, plug the battery in while the radio is in bind mode, and um, it's going to go ahead and start flashing. As you see, I don't even plug in the battery all the way. I just put it on enough just so where it's going to go ahead and get a bind. And then you wait a few seconds and then just disconnect the battery. And that will go ahead and turn green as you see right there. So I took the radio out of bind after I disconnected the battery. And then we're going to go ahead and connect the battery back up again. And we're going to see that the receiver is green. So now we're going to go ahead and put the side plates onto the, I guess, the aluminum. And it's you're going to use the actual shiny screws that it comes with. Um, you'll be able to find those in your bag that, that it came with. And it's going to go just like that. And what you also want to make sure, too, is when you're using the screws, um, that they don't go through like the, to the back as you see right there they're even um, if they're too long that means you have the wrong screws so I'm gonna go ahead and screw these on and uh, get both sides done so now that both sides are done as you notice that top hole does not use a hole a screw hole that is actually for the antenna and we'll go to that later um, make sure that the slots on the aluminum are facing inwards that's for the cutout for the camera And then we're going to go ahead and mount it to the actual base of the quad, just like so. And you're going to want to use, I believe there's some screws in there. I don't believe it really matters. You just don't want to use too long of a screw when you're going ahead and mounting it to the actual bottom. As you see there. And now I'm going to go ahead and connect the, put the camera on first before I actually put it on the base plate. Um, this just makes it easier to assemble. So I'm putting, I'm having some struggling with putting that camera in there to have a magnetic tip screwdriver. But you just want to go ahead and line it up on one side. You just have to do one for now, just so it's mounted, and then just screw it in there. And then we can adjust it later, how much angle you want or whatnot. Just, just to pretty much a placeholder just to get it in there. So that's all tightened up. Um, we're going to go ahead and get the other side mounted as well. And we're going to be tucking the receiver and everything else on top of the flight controller like so. Now it came with this little square um, carbon piece. I, round, I mounted my antennas through it. You can also mount your antennas off the arms on the bottom. Um, I probably would prefer it on the arms because these do stick out pretty far. Um, and now you went ahead and I left two screws out just so I can go ahead and mount the antenna onto the, um, onto the back. Not the antenna, but the mount for the antenna for the VTX onto the back. And I just kind of put it in there. And then once you're done, uh, you want to use the longer screws and then it goes in there. And then this little square piece will go into the front, and then you want to go ahead and mount that uh, using, I believe I used some flat screws I had left over in the package. I don't think it really matters much on that. But just screw those on there, and then pretty much the build is pretty much complete. All we have to do is um, set it up in uh, Betaflight and um, finish setting up the radio. I do have videos on all of that in um, on my channel and I'll go ahead and link those to below so you can go ahead and finish setting this thing all up um, but that's pretty much everything all set up as you see here now I'm just putting the figuring out I'm gonna put how to do the antennas I'm gonna use zip ties and also some heat shrink to mount the antennas um, I am also you need to go ahead and get that battery pad you have and mount that to the actual bottom uh, I'm actually not gonna even use this thing um, but if you're going to use that, it just protects your battery. Um, but that's pretty much the entire build. Um, I appreciate you guys watching um, and look forward to the future review. I'm going to be doing a full review on this thing, see how it flies, see how it does on 3S and 4S. Um, but 
I appreciate you guys watching again, and I'll see you guys in another video. Peace.